Happy Mother's Day to all the moms that are here this morning. We're so glad to have everybody in service today. If you missed it on the way in, there's a photo op out there. That's not just for mothers, but for any family members that you guys want to take a picture with. You can um, take a picture with family and post it, hashtag Inverness AG. That way um, we can all be in one place and see each other's pictures as well. So we're excited to have everybody here today. If you're visiting, uh, make for sure and mark that so we can get a letter in the mail to you and welcome you to church. And also, um, just a quick reminder, on Tuesday mornings um, at 10 o'clock, we have women's meeting as well as men's meeting. That is a change from 11 o'clock, so it's a little bit different, but we would love for you to come out and be a part. And we are all excited that you're here. We also have Grad Sunday next Sunday, and we will be honoring all the grads. So if you are a grad, make for sure you're here. We're going to have a, a gift for you and acknowledge your accomplishment. And also, if you know anybody in your family that's a grad and you haven't told Pastor Steve, it's probably not too late to add somebody. Um, so just call the church office, and we'd love to add you to that. Also... Um, We'll be honoring mothers a little bit more further in the service, but we just want to, if you could all stand, we're going to go to the Lord in prayer and open the service. Thank you. Lord, we just thank you for today, Lord. We thank you for mothers, Lord, and we thank you for those that stand in the place of mothers. Lord, we give this service to you, Lord, and everything that it is. And Lord, for, for those that might be struggling today for different reasons that Mother's Day brings, Lord, we just pray that you would minister to hearts. Lord, we pray that we would be able to focus completely on you today and just glory, bring glory and magnify your name. We love you this morning and we just um, give everything that is us to you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.
love you, Jesus. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord Almighty. For my soul longs and even faints for you.
loves you today. As moms, we don't always feel like we're enough, or we've done enough, or we've said enough, or we loved enough. Guess what? We're enough for him this morning. We're more than enough. You better pray so I hit all these notes.
for your presence your here great this morning. Name, Lord. Jesus. Your name above that name.
Hallelujah. Let's give him some praise. Amen. How's everybody feeling this morning? Hallelujah. You didn't sound that, that enthused. How's everybody feeling this morning? Let's get enthused. Amen. We're happy this morning to be in the house of God, praising God. We're happy, uh, as my parents would say, or actually my dad would say, it's another good day when you're above ground. Amen. That we get to come here and worship and serve the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen. Amen. So good to see everybody this morning. We're going to continue to worship with our tithes and offerings this morning, our giving. And I'd like to ask the ushers to go ahead and make themselves available for you. This is normally the moment when we would release the kids to go to kids' church. But uh, I just want them to be a part of our Mother's Day presentation this morning right after the offering. And then we'll release them to go. Um, But if you have your Connect cards... uh, Jessica mentioned these kind of just shortly before the service, but if you haven't filled out one of these yet, please fill it out for us. We do it every week, and uh, it just if you have a change in information, you can write your full information. If you don't have a change, just write your names, and I'm sure we already got your address and stuff. But uh, the most important part of that card is on the back side, and if you have a prayer request or a praise report, we want to pray with you, and we want to praise with you. So if something's going on in your life, we want to know about it here at the church, and we want to be able to join you in prayer for it. And then we want to praise God when God answers that prayer. Amen. And then if you have an upcoming hospital visit or surgery that you know about, uh, you can fill that out so that we can make sure and and stop by and see you. So uh, no matter how you partner with us uh, here at the church, those of you who have been here a long time, and maybe a few of you have been here a short time, uh, but I just want to thank you for partnering with First AG and the ministry that we do. Uh, There's been 39 and a half years of ministry in this building uh, right here, actually. And and, uh, actually, it's a little less than that, isn't it? It's 39 and a half years with the rushings before me, uh, but we are stepping in and continuing that ministry, and and uh, we have a hope and a prayer to reach the city of Inverness and those who are lost and don't know Jesus, that we can bring them in and we can love them into a relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. That's what we're about. So thank you so much for partnering with us in that. If you have your offering in your hand, let's just offer them up to the Lord this morning. Father, we just thank you for the opportunity to give into the kingdom. Lord, we know that you don't necessarily need our money, Father, because because that's not how you operate, but you allow us to be a part of it, and then you bless us when we're obedient to give. Father, I just pray over every giver, every tither in this place, that you would bless them according to the principles of your word, that blessings will be on their household, that blessings will be on their finances, blessings will be on their marriages, on their relationships, and blessings will be on their children. And Lord, we thank you for that today in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen.
Amen. Good to see everyone this morning. Uh, so today is Mother's Day. So happy Mother's Day to all the moms that are in the room. Let's go ahead and give it up for them. Amen. But I have asked my beautiful wife just to address the moms today. Good morning, fellow moms. How many of you have had a rough day already this morning? <laughs> I've had a rough morning myself, and I think sometimes that goes with the territory of being a mom. So we want to um, pay special tribute to the moms. But I also wanted to share something that God laid on my heart this morning. Um, I was just praying for everybody this morning because sometimes... How many of you know holidays and even Mother's Day can be a magnifier of things in our life? And sometimes um, Mother's Day is always something great to celebrate, but sometimes it's hard on you know mothers and even uh, people who have lost their mothers, uh, ones that might have struggle in their relationship with their kids or that are just dealing with the distance. If you're far away from your kids today, maybe in distance, but maybe it's emotionally. There can be so many different things. But one scripture that I was concentrating on this morning is in Matthew. It's also, there's an account of it in Luke about how Jesus wants to draw us to him just like a mother hen draws her children unto herself under the, her wings. And um, I just wanted to encourage everybody to focus on that today. And I noticed in praise and worship today that all of the songs focused on Jesus' love and on his friendship. And that's something that we can all, you know, concentrate on today, whether, whether we have our moms here or whether we don't. Um, we can just remember, you know, who he is to us. And so I just wanted to leave you with that thought to think about, you know, that how much he loves us, just like a mom does. Which is funny, isn't it? Because he's not a lady. <laughs> but he has the attributes to love us like a mom. So I just wanted to, to leave that thought. Amen. So I'm actually going to, uh, could, to be preaching on uh, that mom's got their attributes from God. So that's part of, part of the message today. Uh, before we release the kids, there's just one, one quick thing. I, I hope that everybody in the room got your gift. I, I know they were only on the front tables coming in the front entrance. So if you came in the side entrance today, make sure uh, they're for all daughters, all ladies in the room. So any, any lady in the room, uh, if you're a daughter or if you're a mom, that gift is for you. And there's a, there's a little pen and a pad that, that goes together and they're in the foyer and baskets so if you didn't get yours coming in make sure and go out that way and and get your gift and then also in the foyer jessica mentioned briefly that there's a photo op up there there's a backdrop it says best mom ever uh, so make sure and get your picture taken um, if even if your kids aren't with you today take a picture and send it to them just let them know best mom ever you know just just let them know all right um, matter of fact we we did that i did that for someone this morning and and sent it to them and uh, i think he was shocked there you are back there I think he was shocked uh, to get a picture from a, of his mom from a phone number he didn't recognize. Uh, so I had to do a little explaining on there instead of just sending the picture. Uh, but make sure that you do that. Take advantage of it, all right? So we, w we just have a, a few little gifts that we want to give out today uh, and just recognize uh, certain moms in the room. And we wanted to have a, just a little bit of fun with it, but we also wanted to be honoring. Uh, so what we want to do, first of all, is we have public gift cards to give out. And, and the first mom that we want to honor in the room today would be the oldest mom mom. And I know that's not always a badge of honor for some people. They don't feel like it is, but trust me, it is. It's a badge of honor. Uh, so we would like to honor the oldest mom in the room, and Jessica has a gift card for you. So we're going to say if there's anybody over 100 here today, is there anybody over 100? No? All right, let's, let's go 90 to 100. Anybody over 90 in the room today that's a mom? Do we have a mom over 90? We do. We do. We have one right over here. Praise God. I'm going to bring that down to you. Give me one. Just give me one, baby. Okay, give me one of those. There we go. <laughs> They're stuck together there. God bless you. <laughs> Can I have a hug? 98 years young. And, and listen, I must say, does not look a day over 60. I'm just telling you, 98 years young, she has, beautiful. She has a twin sister, too. She does. Incredible. 
So the next mom that we want, would like to honor would be the newest mom. And listen, uh, newest mom doesn't just encompass having a baby, but it also encompasses uh, adopting a baby. So the newest mom in the room, whether you've adopted or have, have had a baby naturally, uh, we want to honor you. So has anyone had a baby in the last six months? Okay. We have one over there in the last six months. Praise God. We got two. Caitlin, I will take care of you after service. <laughs> there you go. God bless you. Thank you. <laughs> All right, let's give it up for her. How old's your baby? How old? Two months. Two months old. Caitlin, what do you got? Almost three months. All right. I was, I'm still going to take care of you, Caitlin. I'm going to get you something. All right. These last two we want to have a little fun with because moms are known for certain things. Uh, and sometimes moms are embarrassing and, and, uh, and, and for kids. And, and sometimes moms carry a purse that the kid could fit in. So what we want to do is honor the mom with the largest purse here today. So if you have a gigantic purse, we just want you to hold it up in the air right now. Okay, I got one right over there. I got one right here. I've got one right here. I've got, oh my gosh, there's, there's, a, there's a big one over there, right? Now, now see, purses don't just serve the purpose of, uh, of, of, but they actually carry everything you need for life in that purse, right? So uh, what we'd like to do is I'm going to have Jessica pick out. So ladies with the largest purses, hold them up one more time. I'm going to have Jess pick the winner. We're, we're going to go with Cheryl. She, she's got one. It's about the same width. There was like four purses all the same size, but there was, hers is taller. So we're going we're gonna to go ahead and honor Cheryl for the largest purse in the room. <laughs> God bless you. And the last one, listen, this one really helps me out sometimes. The mom who can find me something to eat in your purse quickly, the fastest, and get the food out and lift it in the air wins this last gift card. You got to have it, got to have the, oh, oh, Miss Florine, she's already got it in the air. <laughs> Do I get the food? No, I'm not going to take your food. I was going to take the food, but I didn't want to take it. Here. Here you go. That's in case Bob gets hungry during service. Amen. Well, well God bless you, moms. We're, we're so thankful for you today. Kids, you're released to go to Kids Church. Thank you so much for bearing with us, and hope you guys have a great time in there. Thank you, honey. Let's give the moms one more hand clap this morning. such a blessing to see all of these kids. That is awesome. We've got tons and tons. How are we doing, guys? Praise God. Well, this morning I want to take just a moment and welcome those who are watching online. We do live stream in case you didn't know. So maybe you've been coming to church for a little while and uh, if anything happens and you have to miss church, uh, possibly on vacation or just out of town or maybe sick, anything like that, you can go to our Facebook page and you can click on live stream. Live stream has been going on for several months now. Um, but lately we've gotten some, some enhancements to it. So it's a little ple more pleasurable of an experience to watch on live stream. The, the volume and the sound is way better than it was. Uh, so we want to welcome everybody that's watching on live stream, including my mom and dad who are in West Virginia at their campground uh, watching this morning. We love you. Love you, Mom. Happy Mother's Day. Wish I could be with you today, but, uh, but love you, and I'll see you soon. All right, so we're going to be preaching, or we, I, honey, do you want to help me preach this morning? No, I'm up here by myself, so I guess me. I'm going to be preaching this morning on the purpose of a woman. 
And uh, when I say that, it probably immediately might uh, raise your, your suspicions. You're like, okay, this is a guy up here on stage, and he's preaching on the purpose of a woman. I am, but I'm an, uh, entirely like every other message that I preach. I'm pulling it out of the Bible. So, so the Bible is our, our number one go-to source for any subject matter that we need. Amen? So this morning, I'm going to be preaching the purpose of a woman. Uh, and on Father's Day in June, we're going to be preaching what makes a man. So these two sermons will go together, um, but you'll have a month or so in between uh, between the two. But we'll be preaching to men on Father's Day, and today we're going to be preaching about women, the purpose of a woman. A lot of times in society, and the reason that you may get your suspicions up and say, uh, what exactly is he going to be preaching on the purpose of a woman? And it's because we confuse in our society roles with purpose. I'm not preaching this morning on the roles of a woman because how many of you know the roles of men or women have changed throughout the decades? So especially in the last hundred years, the roles of men and women in our society and our culture have changed on a regular basis. So I'm not talking about your roles or your societal roles, but I'm talking about your purpose. And how many of you know that there's times that you need to know what your purpose is? It doesn't matter what your role is. You need to know what your purpose is. That way, if your role seems to be demeaning in the moment, and it might be a job, it might just be something you have to do. Uh, I told a couple of people this week that my role as a pastor is in many different capacities. I've had hospital visits. I've had counseling sessions. I've gotten to preach. Uh, I've gotten to make decisions about the church financially. And then, you know, what else I've gotten to do as a pastor is this past week, I've gotten to fix two toilets. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I have gotten down on the bathroom floor and fixed a leak and repaired another toilet. And, and sometimes that's the role of a pastor. Amen. But that's not necessarily my purpose. My purpose is much greater than my role at times. And just like I, uh, you, your purpose is much greater than your role is at times. And ladies, may I say that many times your purpose is much greater than your current role. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. If you would turn with me to Genesis chapter 1, that's where we're going to be starting the message and reading out of today. And if you are having a hard time finding Genesis, it's the very first book of the Bible. Chapter 1 is the very first chapter of the very first book of the Bible. That's where we're going to be today. So one time I'll tell a story about my mom while I'm waiting on you to find that book. So, so my mom, one time when I was a little kid, both saved my life and insulted me in the same sentence. Does that sound odd? How can you save somebody's life and insult them in the same sentence? I know my mom's just shaking her head right now in West Virginia. Going, I can't believe he's telling stories on me. One time I was in the back of my dad's King Cab Datsun truck. And if you've never seen a King Cab Datsun truck, they had jump seats. The seats were sideways in the back. And I was a little kid. I was about seven years old. And I was sitting in that jump seat, and we were taking a trip. And I was so excited because the seat went sideways, and I could have pillows, and I could have blankets, and all of that laid out in the back of that King Cab truck. That was way before safety was an issue. Uh, so we didn't even think about safety back then. So I was laid out in that truck, and I found these little rubber stoppers in the bottom of that cab these little tiny rubber stoppers, and I thought, well, I wonder what that rubber stopper is there for. So I, I worked at it and worked at it with my little tiny fingers, and, and uh, I finally got the stopper pulled out of the floor, and I noticed the coolest thing for a seven-year-old, I could see the highway. There was actually daylight and yellow lines and, and asphalt and all kinds of stuff down there. And I thought, you know, it's kind of stuffy back here because mom and dad are hogging all the air conditioning. You know what I could do? If I get to where I need just a breath of fresh air, I can stick my lips over that hole and I can suck in some fresh air. You know, a seven-year-old isn't all that bright, just so you know, or at least I wasn't a bright seven-year-old. So I, I put my lips over that hole and proceeded to suck what I thought was fresh air and my mom turned around and saw me and said, stupid, are you wanting to die? So she both insulted me and saved my life right in the same moment. 
<laughs> now, if you know my mom, my mom, that was probably the only time in my life she ever said something negative and derogatory to me. But she, she looked at me, and, and I was sucking in all the fumes from the exhaust. You know, I, I, I'd have been gone, you know, in, in just a few short minutes. You know, they would, they would, I'd have been quiet. They wouldn't have known why. So, so basically, she saved my life. So in Genesis chapter 1, verses 26, it reads like this. Then God said, let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them, and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Let's pray over the message this morning. Father, I just thank you for once again having the opportunity to stand up here and proclaim your word. Lord, we're so grateful and thankful that you don't leave us how you find us, Lord, but that you found me many years ago, Lord, and you transformed my life. And now today I get to do this through your glory and through your honor and and by your power, Lord. And Father, as always, I can never do this on my own. I can never proclaim your word and preach your word on my own, but I need the power of the Holy Spirit in this place this morning. Lord, I pray that through the Holy Spirit that this word would sink into our hearts and we'd be able to apply it to our lives. In Jesus' name, everybody said, amen. So this scripture is key to understanding the purpose and the value that God places on the woman. We may have read this scripture uh, hundreds of times, but maybe we haven't really actually deeply thought about it. So we've read this scripture tons of times, but I'm going to be pointing out parts of this scripture this morning that maybe you haven't uh, quite thought about uh, and the scriptures around it, both in Genesis chapter 1 and Genesis chapter 2, I'm going to be referring to. Uh, So today, as we celebrate Mother's Day, uh, we do and we honor moms, but how many of you know that mother is not the entirety of the role of a woman? Mother is not the entirety of the purpose of a woman. Mother is a great honor, and it's a part of who a woman is, but it's not in its entirety. And sometimes women can get lost in who they are, thinking that all they are is a mother. But there's many other aspects to a woman other than mother. Mother is a great aspect of a woman, but it's not all of who she is. And if a woman gets lost in mothering, and that's all of who she is, then when the kids get old enough to leave the nest, the mother is left wondering what she's supposed to do with the rest of her life. Uh, I'm here to tell you this morning that mothering is a small aspect of who you are, but that's not the entirety of who you are, that you get to change the world simply because you're a woman. God created you as a woman to make an impact on society, to make an impact on the kingdom, to make an impact on the church, to make an impact on people. God created you to do more than just mother. And although we are thankful and we honor that aspect of who you are, uh, we know and believe, and I preach today, that you are so much more than that. Amen? You are more than just a mother. So the man, I'm going to lay some groundwork first, and then we're going to talk about three aspects of a woman that God created you to be that describe what your purpose is. All right? So in the groundwork, we understand that the man was created first, but before the male was created, God created nature and animals and then placed man in charge over it. So we know that in the creation story. They probably uh, have learned that in kids' church at some time this year. They've probably talked about creation, right? And if you've been in church for any, any length of time, you've probably heard about the creation story in Genesis and what happened. So man in this verse, because it says man a lot within Genesis, But how many of you know that man in this verse doesn't indicate gender, but it indicates kind? 
So you have animal kind and you have mankind, and mankind is both male and female. So you have two genders, no matter what society tries to tell us today, we only have two genders, amen? There is a man and there is a woman, and that's the way God created us to be. Uh, Facebook did a little, uh, got so many complaints a while back, a few years ago, that they decided to add a third gender on Facebook. And then after they added the third gender, they got so many more complaints because people didn't identify with that third gender. Uh, so they added a fill in the blank. You just fill in the blank. And, and sometime uh, within the first few hours, there was thousands of genders that people identified with on Facebook. How many of you know that that's lunacy? That's absolutely craziness, but that's the society that we live in. So in this society that we live in, how many of you know that men and women alike and men and women sitting in this room today better know what your purpose is from God? Because if you don't know what your purpose is, society will sway you in any old direction. And you'll be like those people who are fumbling through life trying to figure out exactly who they are or what they are, and they don't understand that God created them with a purpose and a power and an authority and a value and a worth. And that worth and value and authority and power is not found in things of this world. It's not found in society, but it's found only in God. Amen. If you believe that this morning, just give them a hand clap of praise because God knows who you are. Amen. God knows who you are. And if anybody in this room is struggling with knowing who you are, you only have to ask your creator. If I need to know how to work an iPhone, I go to the directions that the iPhone came with, right? Uh, if I need to know how to work my iPad or my PC, I go to the directions that it came with, and the directions were written by the creators. Well, we have directions that was written by our creators that is called the Holy Bible. And we can go to that Bible and find out exactly who we're supposed to be and what we're supposed to be like and, and what our purpose is in life. Amen? Amen. That was for free this morning. So, so, so God blessed men and women and gave them. Did you notice how the, the verbiage kind of shifted halfway through that scripture? God gave them both a charge to be fruitful and multiply and to have dominion over every living thing on the earth. God didn't just give man a charge to be in dominion over every living thing on the, on the earth, but God gave them, both male and female, he created them, and he gave them a charge to be in dominion over every living thing on the earth. If you're not careful looking at society and even looking at the church in the last hundred years, you would think that God has a disdain for women, or you would think that God would place women in a back pew or a back seat somewhere and not be in leadership and not be teaching, but I beg to differ this morning that even in the beginning, God took Adam and Eve and he gave them dominion over everything on the earth. Now, do we serve in a, in a society? Are we in a world where sin entered the picture and there were some consequences to that sin? But it's important that we know that even in the beginning, God's heart was for man and woman to be equal in worth and value and in dominion over the earth and dominion over everything in the earth. So man and woman together were the capstone of God's creation and placed in headship over it. Now the Bible is very clear that God has placed headship of the home on the man. God has placed headship of the marriage on the man. The Bible is very clear about that. But how many of you know that headship doesn't value more worth? What headship is, is more responsibility. Amen? So, so guys, I don't know if you want that, right? But you, you're a head over your family, and you're in headship over your marriage. But that doesn't mean that you're more valuable than your wife. That doesn't mean that you're more important than your wife. That doesn't mean that you're more important than your household. But what that does mean is you have more responsibility, that God holds you responsible for the way that your household goes. So you are responsible to God. That's why when Eve took that first bite of the apple, it wasn't... Uh, Eve that God came calling for. Who did God come calling for? He came calling for Adam. Adam, where are you? 
Eve took the first bite. Eve gave the apple to Adam, and, Ad- and then Adam bit, and then they both recognized their nakedness, and then they both tried to make clothes and hide in the bushes, and they were both there together, but God came calling Adam. Because things that happen in your marriage and things that happen in your life may not be your fault. Because sometimes people go crazy, and sometimes it's the man that goes crazy, and sometimes it's the woman that goes crazy. But although what's happening in the relationship or the marriage or the household may not be your fault, men, it's still your responsibility. It is quiet this morning. <laughs> so, so I want to talk about how God views men and women. And he views us both, male and female, with the same value and the same worth. And we're going to talk about why that is. So scripture says that God created us. But then in chapter 1, it also says that God formed us. So it's two distinct words in chapter 1 of Genesis. It says God created, and then it says that God formed. So God created us, and and creation means to make something from nothing. To make something from nothing. So God created us in spirit and soul. But God formed us out of the creation, which was the dirt of the ground. God formed us out of the mud, out of the, out of the dirt that was there in the garden, out of the clay. God formed the body, which was man. And then into that body, he breathed what he created, which was the soul and the spirit. So in the scriptures, Genesis, it says that God formed only how many bodies from the ground? God only formed one body from the ground. I found this very interesting. When God went and made Adam and Eve, when God went and and made a helpmate, and we're going to talk about what that word means today, but when God went and created Eve, he didn't create Eve out of the dirt of the ground. He created Eve out of what? Out of Adam's rib. So God only ever in history made one body from the dirt of the ground. So if God only ever in history made one body from the dirt of the ground, but then he divided that body into male and female, what does that say about male and female? They were both created in the same body, in the same likeness of God, with the same worth, uh, with the same love, loving tenderness. God created both of them into one body, and then he separated it, and he made them two genders, male and and female out of the same body. So if we look at, uh, at, at why God uh, only used one body, I, I, I would say this today. We see some things that happen in society, and we see some, some wars, and we see racism, and we see every other evil that's going on in society today. But I would venture to say that God only created everybody in this room, everybody in this earth. He only made one body. So that means we all, whether we're white, whether we're black, whether we're brown, we all came from one body. We all have the same value. We all have the same worth earth and for what I'm talking about today male and female both came from the same body God made one body from the ground and then he created and separated Eve from that body and then he gave Eve characteristics that he didn't give Adam and and Adam he left characteristics that he didn't give to Eve so that the two could complement each other this comes uh, into play in the New Testament in scripture when Jesus talks about the church being what one body. So as a church, we are one body in the New Testament. So everything that God said, God says and does in the Old Testament, there's principles and things that come into the New Testament. So we are, no matter what race, no matter what creed, no matter what, uh, what, what gender, we are all from one body with the same equal and the same value and the same honor and the same respect and the same worth. Amen? Don't you love that God esteems each and every one of us the same? That God is no respecter of persons. That God doesn't love me any more than he loves you this morning. And God doesn't love somebody sitting next to you any more than he loves the other person on the other side. But that God loves all of us with equal value and worth. Amen? Now, he may be in a greater relation with some people that are sitting here this morning than others. But that's your fault. So some of you in here may spend more time with them. 
than other people, right? So relationship is a whole nother thing, but God's love, God's love is the same, amen? So all of us come from that same creation. So with all of that laid out, we know that women were created with great purpose and with great value and with great worth and much more purpose, value, and worth than they've been given credit for over the last couple of centuries. Much more value and worth than even at times in biblical times that they were given credit for. How many of you know there's many times in the Bible that things happen to a woman and it can make you upset? It can make you mad. But the Bible is recorded in, in many different aspects, and one of those aspects is recorded history. So because the Bible records history doesn't mean it condones it. That's where, that's where people who get upset with the Bible and try to teach against the Bible, they, they miss it. What you're angry about is history recorded. You're not angry about God condoning it, right? So people get upset because there's slavery recorded in the Bible. It's history recorded of the Jews and their lives and the things that happened to them. It's not God. God's, uh, God condoning it necessarily. Although there is times that God allows things to happen in our life because he knows the end result that it'll drive us close to him. Amen? Amen. So women were created with value and worth, and the world today is enamored with identity. People identifying as, as female who were born as male, and, and people of identifying as male that were born as female, and they're enamored with identity. But I would, I would say to you today that in that identity, if they found out what their purpose was, the identity wouldn't be nearly as important. Amen? If they found out their purpose and value and worth in God, then the identity wouldn't be nearly as important. A lot of times uh, we can get angry with things that are written online and things that are in social media, and, and we as Christians can get angry because we know it's not God's way and it's not with the way God designed it. And I see things like that, and less, I, it makes me less angry and it makes me more sad. Uh, for people who don't know their purpose in him. So my goal is to reach people of, of all walks of life, to reach people everywhere and let them know that God has a purpose uh, for their life, and it's much greater than the identity that they're trying to choose for themselves. Amen? Amen. You guys are quiet. So, so there's two places that we as mankind, both male and female, can get our identity from. We can get our identity from the world, or we can get identity from God. So those are our two choices. Here's the problem, though. The world changes drastically every decade. Every decade, the world comes out with something different. Every decade, things change in the world. Uh, but for the Bible, it is true all the time. God never changes. God's, God's truths are always true. We can always go to God's truths because they're always true. But what's true in society right now wasn't true 10 years ago. And what's true and people are grabbing a hold of in society today won't be true 10 years from now. But that we have to grab a hold of the truth that stands the test of time, and that's God's truth, and find our purpose in Him. Amen? So this message is geared towards the women, but it's important for men to understand the purpose and the value of a woman in their lives as well. And all the women said... Amen. We need men to know how important you are. So here's, here's three facts that I want to give you before we move into the aspects of a woman and the way God created you. The most dangerous thing to a man or a family, the most dangerous thing to a man or a family is a woman who has drifted from her purpose. The most dangerous aspect in a man's life and the most dangerous aspect in a child's life is a woman who has drifted from her purpose. A woman who is not living in her biblical purpose of who God created her is actually dangerous to a family because, because women wield so much influence. Women wield so much influence that a woman can take a, take a family out or a woman can hold a family together. Women yield that, yield that much influence. Secondly, the most foolish thing is a man who doesn't understand the purpose of his wife, and he discounts her as less valuable or important than he is. That's the most foolish thing that a man can do. A man must understand the value and the worth of the woman of the house. A man must understand the way God created her and purposed her so that he understands it's for his benefit, not his detriment. 
Amen. It is for him, not against him. And thirdly, the greatest tragedy is a man who doesn't understand God's purpose for a woman and instead misuses or abuses her. And that's the greatest tragedy because that goes against all that God created a woman to be. That goes against her purpose. It goes against everything in that way. A woman is a powerful being who God created in his own image with a specific purpose in mind. How many of you remember uh, James Brown? Right? James Brown sang a song back in the day. It's a man's world. Right? And he sang that song. And that's the way that society is viewed. And, and it especially was a view during, during that decade, during that season. Uh, it was viewed that it is a man's world and women were just getting along, right? Women were just in it. And that was society's fact. But he twisted that song. He said, It's a man's world. He said, But it wouldn't be nothing without a woman or a girl, right? It flipped back around. And we as men need to understand that, that we wouldn't even be here without a woman. Amen. I wouldn't even be here without, without my sweet mama. And I think all the women just yelled amen, did they? In this section, right? I wouldn't even be here without my sweet mama today. We need to honor the women who are in our lives. We need to come alongside them and, and, and make their lives better because as you make her life better, she makes your life better. That's the cycle of living together as God created us with a husband and a wife, but also within a family. As we make her life better, she makes our life better. It's cyclical. Our, our, our relationship is cyclical. So our culture has been guilty of not placing enough value on women. But this is an, also a problem. Is because of that in the past, it's gone sway slid in the other direction. But the Bible says that a man is not any more valuable than a woman, and a woman is not any more valuable than a man, but we are equal in value. But because women have been mistreated for generations, uh, women today, we see women who have moved away from God's purpose in their life because if they understand God's purpose, they understand there's something greater. But women who have moved away from his purpose, and you have a, a feminist movement in things that have happened since the 1960s, right? So things have gotten out of order as the way God created it. So they were out of order in one way, and then they slid out of order in the other way. But I tell you this morning that there's a happy median, and that's right in smack dab in the middle of the will of God for our lives. So as we as men live in the will of God, and you as women live in the will of God, everything's going to work out. Everything's going to move in the right direction that we're supposed to be. So Christianity gets accused of placing women on a back shelf. But I just want to point out a few times in the Bible, both good and bad, that women wielded major influence, right? Uh, Abraham. How many of you know Abraham? Right? Abraham, Father Abraham, right? We sing songs about him in kids' church, right? Uh, we, 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 we know Abraham is known as a friend of God. We sing a song, I am a friend of God. And, and that's from, from the scripture of God talking about Abraham, right? That Abraham was a friend of God. He was a father of a nation. He was in covenant with God before anybody else in Israel was, right? He was way ahead of them. He was way ahead. He was in personal relationship with God. A man who walked and talked with God on a regular basis. And then God gave him a promise. He said, Abraham, I'm going to give you a son. And they were like way past childbearing age, right? Like our, like our mother this morning, right? Way past childbearing. I mean, how surprised would you be if you woke up pregnant tomorrow, right? That would, that would be a surprise. So, 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 and this is how Abraham and Sarah were. They were like, no, God, that, you know, this is impossible. This can't happen. And yet God gave them a promise in their old age. He gave them a promise. Well, the promise was taken a little long for Sarah. Right? It was, it was dragging on just a little bit. And, and so Sarah decided to take uh, the matter into her own hands. And she went to Abraham and she said, you know, Abraham, I know God promised a son, but maybe he just didn't give us all the details. And you know that women like to take charge, right? <laughs> I was waiting. I got one amen. The rest of the men are scared to death. They're like, <laughs> I'll, I'll give you guys another shot. You know, women like to take charge, right? Okay, there we go. So, so Sarah came in and took charge and said, Abraham, you know, God is really slow in providing us with a son. Uh, I want you to go sleep with the maid. And Abraham said, no, woman, that is not God's will. I know him because I've been walking with him. I'm in covenant with him. I'm in relationship with him. No, he didn't say that. He said, okay. <laughs> and he went into Hagar and had a son out of the will of God. 
right? And then David, David was a man's man. He was appointed and anointed as a young kid to be king of Israel. He was powerful and strong. He, he led Israel. He was, he, was, uh, he was a man after God's own heart is what the Bible said about David. And then one day David's on a rooftop and uh, he got his head turned by a woman in a bathtub, right, named Bathsheba. Did you ever find that odd? Her name's Bathsheba and she was in a bathtub. That's how my mind works. So... So Bathsheba was on the, on, the, on the top in a bathtub, and he got his head turned, and he went absolutely crazy. Because that's what a woman can do. A woman can drive you absolutely crazy, or a woman can take you to heights you never knew you had in you. That's because women wield influence that God placed within them. Women have value and worth and power that God placed within them. Pontius Pilate knew this. Pontius Pilate stood before a crowd of Jews listening to screams of crucify him as they threw Jesus down on the steps in front of them. Pontius Pilate, uh, the, the leader of an entire region placed there by Rome itself before he would make a decision, went and talked to who? He went and talked to his wife because he knew where his counsel came from. He knew where his good advice came from. And before he made a decision, he went and talked to his wife. His wife said, I would wash my hands of this. And what did Pontius Pilate do? He went out and publicly washed his hands of this. Because men, once you find out that your women have, have counsel that can change your life, uh, you always take it. You move in that direction. I joke with my wife a lot, but she's hardly ever wrong when she gives me serious counsel. She's wrong on directions all the time. But when she gives me serious counsel, she's never wrong. And I always listen to it. Samson, no man could conquer him. Slayed an entire army of a thousand men with the jawbone of a donkey. I mean, this dude was bad. Nobody could take Samson out. Right? They all wanted to kill him. And nobody could capture Samson because he was that strong. He was amazing. Right? He was like the incredible Hulk of the Bible, right? Nobody could take him out. Samson was the man, but you know who took him out? A sweet little woman named Delilah, with his head in her lap, took him right out because women wield influence and power. It looked like Naomi and Ruth were doing insignificant things in the Bible. Nobody during this time period would have noticed these two women in the context of the history that they lived. Nobody would have noticed Naomi and Ruth following the harvesters and picking up the scraps in the field so that they could live. They just knew them as two poor widows, two homeless widows who were travelers and sojourners that came through. And nobody would have expected, except God, that they were going to wield the power through the spiritual fighting and the battles that they were fighting during that time, that they were going to be the bloodline of Jesus Christ himself. Nobody knew it at the time, and nobody could have expected it, that the decisions of these two women would be the bloodline of Jesus Christ. Nobody knew it. It was a woman who birthed Jesus. Mary gave birth to the man. And then she had to follow him around as he moved into ministry and he moved out of her house. And she had to listen to things like, who is my mother? Who is my sister? Who is my brother? As he preached the mysteries of God to the people. And she had to endure that. And she had to endure sharing him with thousands of people and crowds. She had to endure giving up her son that she birthed and raised. And then she had to stand at the foot of the cross and she had to watch him be murdered and hung there to die. And then she hadn't had enough and she went to his tomb three days later. And when she went to his tomb, she found that he was risen. And it was a woman who did all of these things and then it was a woman who ran into town and pronounced that we serve a risen God and pronounced that Jesus Christ was raised from the dead and pronounced that all that he said had come to pass. Amen. It was a woman 
because God uses women for incredible things. So let's look at three unique ways. Let's look at three unique ways this morning that God established women and created women for something different than men. Here's point number one. I know that was a long message for point one, isn't it? The points are a little, little smaller, so trust me. Point number one says this. Women are the answer to the world's first problem. Women are the answer to the world's first problem. This is a matter of having the right perspective. And in Genesis chapter 2, verse 18, And the Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper comparable to him. It's important that we as men have this perspective, that women are the answer to our problems, not the problem themselves. Amen? And it's important that you as women need to know that you are the answer to the problem. You are not the problem. And it's important that we as men know that, and it's important that ladies know that, because sometimes, ladies, you can feel like you're the problem. Sometimes you can feel like you're the problem. And sometimes the enemy will attack you, and sometimes problems will be created out of that. But that is not your God-given purpose. Your God-given purpose is not to be the problem. Your God-given purpose is to walk as the answer to creation. So God created all of these things, and then the first time that he says there's a problem, God created all of these things, all of these areas, and he said, it is good, it is good, it is good, it is good. And then he said, it is not good that man should be alone. You know what I'll do? I'll make woman. So woman was the answer to the world's first problem, and woman is still the answer to the world's problems. Because God created you to walk in purpose and authority. So, so here's something that, that, I, that I kind of have pondered about and thought about. How many of you ever see something in the Bible and it just makes you question, right? And that's okay. I want, I want you to question things that you read because I want you to dig deeper. I want you to go deeper with God. And sometimes when we read something that doesn't quite make sense, because we know that God is, is, is all-knowing. We know that God is ever-present. We know God that knows everything that has been, knows everything that will be. Uh, why would God create in such a way that there would immediately be a problem? Why would God create in such a way that they would know beyond a shadow of a doubt that immediately there's going to be a problem? We believe and we understand that God is all-knowing, Right? So God had to know that there was going to be a problem uh, when he created Adam by himself. So when Adam was all in one, there had to be a problem. So God knew that was coming. So, so why would God do it? Why would God create in such a way that there would be a problem that he would have to go back and fix? Well, as I, as I thought about this and, and uh, studied about this, here's a couple of reasons that I can come up with. Here's number one. So that Adam or man would know that the answer to his primary problem couldn't be found out there in all of creation, but is found in the woman that God has placed by his side. I know men who seek the answers to their problems in all of creation. They go hunting, fishing, and listen, there's nothing wrong with that. But I know men who run from their wives to go hunting, fishing, and, and all of these things, and play golf and do all this, and they run from their wives to do that stuff. I know men that live that way, but they'll never find the answer to the question, which is, what is my purpose, without uh, paying attention to who God provided as the answer to that question. So Adam searched all of creation looking for somebody who would fulfill him, looking for somebody who would meet that need that he had, and he couldn't find it in all of creation. And then God brought him Eve. And then God created woman. Because Adam needed to know that woman was that important, that he could not find the answer in all of everything else in this world, but he sure could find the answer in her. Does anybody wonder why uh, God put Adam to sleep when he created Eve? I think it was so that Adam didn't write down the recipe, just so you know. Because the first time Eve made him mad, he'd be over there in the corner of the garden trying to make up another woman, right? <laughs> God did not want him to have the recipe. He knows how we men think. So, so number two, God waited for Adam to get to the point that he would come to God and ask him for something that he needed. See, sometimes God does that in our lives. He knows that you need it. He knows there's a deficit. He's all-knowing. But he's just waiting for you to come ask him. He's like a good father. 
I know there's a problem, but I'm not going to intervene until you step in front of me and ask me. And sometimes when you have a problem, you need to go to your father. You need to get on your knees and just pour out your heart and ask him to intervene in that situation. And, that's, and I think maybe that's where Adam was. Adam had looked in all creation and was down and despondent, and he needed something, and he had to go to God, his father, to get it. But the answer was a woman. Amen? So all women are gifts, even if they're not currently acting like it. I'm going to let that sink in for a minute. Some of y'all are taking notes. All women are gifts, even if they're not currently acting like it. But if they're not, or you're not as a man, all it takes is a change of perspective. You just need that change of perspective. Here's, here's point number two this morning is this. Women are warriors. So women were the answer to the world's first problem. And the next thing that is that women are warriors. Where do you get this from, Pastor Steve? Well, I'm going to share it with you, okay? Genesis 2.18, we just read it. The second part of that is, I will make him a helper suitable for him. The English word helper there doesn't make women feel very valued and loved, does it? To be a helper to somebody else is, is to be under them. Uh, so the English word there doesn't really do justice what God intended for the woman to be to the man. So what I did is I dug into that word helper, and it actually is, is shortened over the years. It came from the word helpmate, and that's even, uh, it's a good thing, and it is a part of who a woman is, but it's not, it doesn't encompass all of who woman is. It doesn't encompass all of it. Uh, so the helpmate came from the old English word help meet. You know, and that doesn't do it either. So you can dig back to that, and it still doesn't really encompass what a woman is. It still doesn't really encompass who she is. Uh, so you dig back, and in the New Testament, uh, the original word was paraclete. And if we think about the word paraclete in the New Testament, uh, it meant advocate or counselor. Now, when we get to advocate or counselor, that more encompasses who my wife is to me than just a helpmate. Right? That encompasses who Jessica is to me way more than just a helpmate. And there's only two people in the New Testament that were ever called a paraclete. That's the wife or the woman and the Holy Spirit. So ladies, you are in good company. Amen. Amen. The Holy Spirit and the woman are the only two who were ever called a paraclete. That's it. So that word gets way closer. It gets way closer to who a woman is. uh, But it still doesn't encompass all of it. It still doesn't encompass all of who a woman is. So if we dig back in Hebrew and we go in the Old Testament uh, where Genesis was written in original Hebrew and we look at that word, it's actually E-Z-E-R. And I I called it Ezer for a long time, but it's not. It's actually pronounced Eitzer, right? Eitzer. E-Z-E-R, pronounced Eitzer. So in the Hebrew word, that word is used in the Old Testament 21 places. So there's 21 places in the Old Testament that we find that word twice. Sorry, twice, not once, twice. Twice for the woman. So women were mentioned in the Old Testament twice as an Ezer or an Eitzer. Three times for nations who came to militarily aid Israel. So three times nations who came into Israel and militarily aided them were called Eitzer. And then 16 times to describe the relationship between God and Israel. 16 times. So if we look at the word Eitzer and the root words of that are two words which mean to rescue and to strengthen. So helpmate or helpmeet doesn't, doesn't totally say what a woman is in a life, in a, in a household. It doesn't, doesn't encompass all of it. Advocate. Advocate is a great thing. Counselor is a great thing, but it doesn't encompass all of what a woman is to a household. But what encompasses all of what a mother is or what a wife is or what a woman is is to rescue and to strengthen. So why would God in the moment when he saw that it was not good send just a helper to Adam? Adam didn't need just a helper. He probably had some chimpanzees running around doing stuff for him, whatever. But he didn't need just a helper, right? So why would God just send him a helper? And God didn't just send him an advocate or a counselor, but God sent him someone who is a lifesaver and a life giver. So to to rescue is a lifesaver. And what a woman is in a household is a lifesaver. To strengthen is a life giver. 
Because when you're running out of strength and you get a little bit more, it's life-giving. So he sent someone to Adam who was a lifesaver and a life-giver. And in the Garden of Eden, if you think about it, was the first area where you could think about a military con- context. It was a battle immediately between good and evil. It was a battle immediately between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of Satan. And they came in immediately to destroy God's creation. So God had to send Adam not just a helpmate, not just a helper, but God had to send Adam a warrior, somebody who would come alongside him and fight, someone who would, who would help him to conquer the enemy, someone who would strengthen him, give him counsel, and give him strength. Someone who was life-giving and life-saving in his life. So God called women to be an her. And long before in the Garden of Eden, when God called woman a helper in the English word, that was way before there was children to care for. So that was way before being a mom. That was before there was washing machines and laundry. I mean, they walked around naked. They didn't wash nothing. Why, well, they might have washed their bodies. I don't know. <laughs> Well, they didn't wash clothes, you know what I mean? There was no clothing to wash. That was before vacuum cleaners. And all the women said, amen. I'm trying to get you with me. That was before houses to clean. So men in the room, if that's all that you think of the woman is that she's put there to clean, to cook, to do these things, then you're you're far, by far, misrepresenting what God created her to be. And ladies, if you're in this place today and you're thinking that's all you're worth or that's all your value, you're totally underestimating who God created you to be. You're totally underestimating the value and the worth that God placed on you because you are the answer to the world's first problem and you're also a warrior. Amen? Can I hear all the ladies give me a war chant? Give me a hoop. Woo! All right. Give me a military hoorah. Just the ladies now, not the guys. Come on. <laughs> so, so God might have called man to be the head of the household, as we talked about earlier. And husband literally means house band. That's literally what it means. He band the house together. So the husband is the physical strength. But I'm going to tell you today that just because woman wasn't designed by God to lead the fight doesn't mean that they can't fight. Just because you weren't designed by God to lead the battle doesn't mean that you don't know how to fight. And trust me, I've, I've got a five-foot-tall Mexican wife, and she knows how to fight. She knows how to fight. Amen? Spiritually, I was talking about. Spiritually. <laughs> so, come help me, baby. <laughs> so, listen. God created man and woman like this, side by side. Not in front of, not behind, and not wife in front of husband, but God created side by side. And, it, and it's a battle that we're in. There's, there's an adventure. If you, if you want to take part of it, there's an adventure. And it, it's the kingdom of God is at stake. And it requires you stepping into that adventure. Now, you can stay out of it and not be involved in it uh, and, and be safe if you want, but God didn't create you to be safe. God created us for adventure. So what it looks like when Jess and I wage in a battle is we're, we're moving. Go ahead, move with me, babe. So, so, so we're moving, and we're side by side, and along the way, we encounter spiritual battles. And when we encounter spiritual battles, I reach out with my sword, and I, and I wield, and I start to fight. But she's behind me at this point while I'm fighting. But you know what she's doing? She's not behind me because she can't fight. She's behind me giving me wisdom, whispering in my ear counsel, telling me which way to turn. Okay, baby, you got one coming on your left. Okay, baby, you got one coming on your right. You need to swing your sword. Now turn around. And then we turn. And then sometimes when we're overtaken and I'm overtaken and I can't keep up, she can get back to back with me and she can draw her own sword and she can fight that side and I can fight this side. Amen. But listen, all of that is spiritually. And that's because women, you are designed to be warriors. 
Women, you are designed to be strong. You are not designed to be abused. You are not designed to be beaten down. You are not designed to be talked down to. But you are designed to be strong and to walk in the authority and the power and the purpose that God gave you. Amen? Side by side. Thank you, baby. Here's the last point for this morning. Women are carriers. So women were the answer to the world's first problem. Women are warriors. And listen, if there's no man in your household, you are totally capable of fighting and leading on your own. You're totally capable. So what I'm saying this morning doesn't mean that you cannot do it. You have the ability to. And if, you're, if, if what's going on in your house is outside of the original design from God, that doesn't mean that God doesn't still have a plan for you. And it doesn't mean that you still can't fight. And if single moms, you protect those kids spiritually. You pull that sword. You go to battle. You be the warrior that you're called to be. And if, if man ran off, let him go. Because you have what it takes. If he can't handle it, you can. Amen? Amen. Amen. So women are carriers. So a woman's primary purpose is to do and be what a man can't do and be. Men can do and be what a woman can't, and a woman has to do and be what a man can't because God designed us differently. And since we're talking about moms today, women are lovers and nurturers because women carry a baby for nine months but then they carry that baby emotionally for the rest of their life. We men, we can check out. We, we got nothing boxes right up there in our head. And anytime you ask a man, what are you thinking about? And he says nothing, it's true. <laughs> He's not keeping anything from you. We literally have a box in our head that we can go to and just think about nothing. It's just blank, blank walls, right? We can do that. Women, women can't do that. So if something's going on with the kids, you know who carries the burden of that? The majority of the time, it's the woman. The majority of the time, the woman carries the burden of what's happening with the kids. The woman carries the burden of what's happening in life because men can check out and women can't. Women aren't designed that way. God designed you to carry a baby in your body and to push an eight-pound object <laughs> out of your midsection. God designed you to do what? Could you imagine if God made men carry babies? I mean, I look at my daughter. There ain't no way I'd want to do that. You know what? Men are kind of dumb, and we try anything once, so there'd probably be a lot less people. We'd try it once, and that'd be it, right? Be one, one and done. Think about men when they have a cold. I mean, they, they can't even deal with the sniffles, much less carry a baby for nine months to term. But women not only carry that baby, but they carry it for life. Listen. Men were designed and created differently. And most men in this room would take a bullet for their family. Most men in this room would dive on, dive on a grenade for your family. Most men in this room would get in between danger and your family physically. But you let something happen spiritually. And unless you as a man are completely linked with who God says you are, you're going to go fishing while your wife battles. But women, you let something happen spiritually to one of your kids. You let something be attacked in the spirit realm. And women go to battle. Women go to warfare. Women go to work. See, there was a woman called, the, the, all she's known as is the Shunammite woman in the Bible. And God gave her a promise that she'd been waiting on. And she had that promise for, for 8, 11 years, something like that. I can't remember the years, but she had them for a certain amount of years. And then one day, the husband came in from the field carrying the boy and handed him to her and told her that something had happened. Well, what did the husband do? The husband went back to work. The husband went back to the field. Well, what did, the, what did the woman do? The woman picked up the promise and carried him upstairs and laid him in the bed where the prophet slept and then got on a, got on a donkey and grabbed some servants and traveled 
to where the prophet was and began to cry out before she even got to him. She was crying out, man of God, man of God, don't you play with me. You gave me this promise. And she went to battle. She went to fight. And that is the essence of who a woman is. You go to battle when things are, when things are tight. When things are down, you go to battle. So men in this room, as you honor the mothers in your life today, don't just honor them for doing laundry. Don't you just honor them for vacuuming. Don't you just honor them for mothering. But you honor them as the warrior and the advocate and the counselor that God placed in your life. Amen. Stand with me this morning. This is what I feel led to do today. All ladies in this place, and we're going to dismiss. It's 12.03. I'm, I'm going to keep you for just a couple more minutes, and we're going to dismiss, and you can go about your day. But if every lady in this place would just get out of your seat and come across this altar and just come fill the altars this morning, just the ladies. If you're comfortable, if you're not comfortable, I totally understand. But if you're comfortable, every lady in this place, just fill up, fill up these altars. Now, every man in this place is willing. I'd like you to come stand behind them. This is what we're going to do. We're going to pray over every woman in this group this morning. And I want you men to pray, like pray out loud. I want you men to pray over the women that are in this group this morning. I'm going to lead it, and I'll lead it on the microphone. But I want every woman that stepped out of her seat and walked up to this altar this morning to know that you're valuable, to know that you're worth, and to know that you're a warrior. And to know that you have what it takes to accomplish anything that God puts in your path. Anything that comes your way. God designed you with strength so that you can tackle it. So we're going to pray over you. And men, if you would, if you're, if you're comfortable, just lift a, lift a hand towards the ladies. If, if you're in front of a lady that belongs to you, you can put a hand on her. If she doesn't belong to you, don't put your hand on her, all right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's pray over the ladies before we dismiss. Lord Jesus, I'm so thankful for every woman at this altar. I'm thankful, Lord, for everyone, both young in age and elder in age. Women who are just coming into their life and, and women who have lived a full life. Father, I declare victory in the minds of every woman here because I know that the enemy likes to attack them in their minds. Lord, we cancel, we cancel any attack of the enemy, any plan that the enemy has coming against any woman standing at this altar this morning or on the keys on stage. Father, that you would just cover each and every one of them with a hedge of protection, guardian angels. Lord, that you would speak into their mind, that they would know and have the perspective without a shadow of a doubt of who they are in you. Father, that they have strength. Father, that they have courage. Father, that they have value. Father, that they have worth. Father, that they will they can kick the enemy out. Father, that they can go to battle, that they can pick up their sword, they can put on their armor, and they can go to battle. Father, I just declare today over every child that might be represented by the mothers up here today that is far away from you. We declare over their lives that they would return to you today. Lord, we just we just cancel the, the plans of the enemy for them, and we just ask, Father, that through the power of the Holy Spirit, you would put a hook in their jaw and draw them back into the house of God, that they would not want to live a day without being in relationship with you, Lord. And everywhere that they go, that they, they would be reminded of you, Father, that there wouldn't be a child left 
left behind in this group. But as these women hit their knees to pray for their children, Lord, that not a prayer would drop to the ground, but that every prayer would go forth in the spirit realm to cause damage to the enemy. Father, that these eight star warriors that are standing before me today, no matter the age, they are eight star warriors, Lord. And I commission them today as their pastor to go forth. I commission them today to hold their heads high. I commission them today to shake off the attacks of the enemy. I commission them today to, to shake out the thoughts that have been placed in their minds from the enemy. And that they would be walking from here knowing without a shadow of a doubt what their purpose is. In Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, Amen. God bless you today. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Thank you so much for coming today. And if you need special prayer other than what we just prayed, please stay in the altars and we'll pray for you. And if not, God bless you. Go spend the day with your families or friends and just enjoy your Mother's Day, all right? God bless you guys.